on this very crucial issue. But before they do that, let me bring some of the important points. One, coronavirus has no respect for anyone, for the rich or for the poor, for the white or for the black people, for the Arabs. It, coronavirus has no respect for anyone. So you must protect yourself. I have in the studio here my protective uh, gear. My guests also have theirs. And you can see the social distancing being maintained within the studio. You must do that physical and social distancing. Washing of your hands with soap and running water. Or you use hand sanitizers, alcohol based. These are some of the ways you can actually uh, prevent coronavirus. Okay, we also have this information. State governors of the 36 states of the Federation yesterday unanimously agreed to implement an uh, interstate lockdown in the country uh, over the next two weeks to mitigate the spread of coronavirus from state to state. The governors under the agents of the Nigerian Governors Forum reached the agreement after receiving briefing from the governors of Lagos, Bauchi, Oyo, and Ugu states who shared their experiences and lessons from the COVID-19, especially the fight against COVID-19. Then there's also the problem of uh, strange deaths in Kanu state and some persons related to COVID-19, but the governor of Kano State, Governor Ganduje, says no, that the deaths have nothing to do with COVID-19, but definitely there's going to be a pro panel to actually unravel what is happening in Kano State. And uh, Lagos State is also doing a lot. But as of today, we understand that um, at yesterday night, 91 new confirmed cases of coronavirus. Well, we hope that this problem will surely become a team of the past. But the lockdown, COVID-19 led to lockdown in a do state. Curfew has been imposed by do state governor, and uh, that has been on, and we've been seeing the level of compliance. And uh, some other states, total lockdown, but in a do state is partial lockdown, except for the curfew, 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. But let's start with um, the chairman of the NYCN, National Youth Council of Nigeria, is representing the youths of Edo State. Now, what's your take on COVID-19, especially as it affects the youths? Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, our very dear presenter. Okay. Uh, COVID-19, as we all know, is uh, one uh, pandemic that started in China some time ago. And uh, has uh, spread across a good number of uh, nations, you know, across the world. Uh, Nigeria is not left out. Okay. We, have, uh, we also have our own uh, toll of it, <laughs> as it is uh, yes. today. We are well. Uh, just like we mentioned, uh, just yesterday, we also had that uh, about 91 new cases, you know, have been confirmed in Nigeria as it is. Uh, while for us in the uh, state, uh, we had uh, two out of that uh, 91. Uh, the federal government, uh, through the NCDC and uh, the federal minister of health, you know, they have been working around the clock in line uh, uh, with uh, the presidential task force of COVID-19 to ensure that uh, the, the spread is uh, put to a halt. But however, the states are also doing, you know, what they can do best. Uh, those states, if we bring it down here, a uh, very dear uh, Wake and see governor and his team have been uh, trying to do their best to ensure that uh, we curtail the spread. Uh, talking about uh, the partial lockdown that uh, we have been uh, observing here in uh, those state, it's been very, very wonderful. And even with the arrangements of the markets, as we speak right now, moving you know, to various uh, public schools, to ensure that they maintain, you know, the social distancing uh, uh, policy, and even before you get into the market, you need to wash your hands, okay. you know, as the case may be. And also, those are measures that have been on ground. And the very good one is this uh, coffee that uh, have been imposed in the last few days, 
I think today we'll be making the, the, fourth, the fourth day. And uh, I see it as a very good development because uh, a lot of uh, activities that usually take place, you know, towards that evening, running into yeah. the night, you know, we're just running as if nothing was you know, going on. actually going on. Talking about uh, beer parlors and some yes, other yes, areas, yes, you know, yes, exactly. people should not congregate. But in the evening, you see a lot of persons gather in one beer parlor, over 40, 50 persons, you know, drinking without uh, maintaining social distance mm. and all this. So, for the governor to have come up with this uh, very uh, laudable idea, it's a very good one. We commend him and we commend uh, all those that are working with him. But a lot more need to be done. Okay, a lot so more need we're to be come done. back to you on that. But let's get the take of uh, Professor okay. uh, Joe Bodion. Thank you, thank you very much. Lockdown. I'm speaking on the youth general now or generally? <laughs> 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 yeah, generally now. Yeah, generally. Well, generally, the lockdown, uh, I imagine that is, this should be the third or fourth week now. Okay. Of lockdown, uh, generally. You know, of uh, the three states, or yeah. three, two states and the FCT that are actually on total lockdown. Lockdown. And then uh, those states, like they mentioned that it's on partial lockdown, the okay. restriction of movement, and with the configures imposed. Uh, what is most intriguing about it is that uh, it has this economic toll, yeah. it has this social uh, toll, and mm. so it has a psychological toll too, mm. because when people uh, go through this phase in life, it's quite traumatic. Mm. So I would say that the experience uh, for most Nigerians will be that of trauma. Mm. I think if I'm picking that mind, trauma in the sense that you have this sense of anxiety, this sense of uncertainty, certainty as due to your health, your safety, and then to your welfare and your security. These are the crucial aspects of that makes you a human being, makes work, life worth living in the first place. And so when you are tied at home, for those in the informal sector, thank God the is not on total lockdown. Mm. Uh, I really want to thank God the quotes. I also hope that uh, uh, in retrospect, we will not regret what we have done or what we have done. Yeah. God knows. But I think, look at the immediate or the short term, short term uh, effect. Can imagine if our artisans were locked at home, our bus drivers, our market women could like their stay, trade and all that. Just imagine what they can go through. I am in the public sector, I imagine that even though we are locked down, at least I will always express my paycheck somehow, somehow. Yeah. Because the kind of union I belong to, they yeah. pay me that there is a quick or not. That is absolute. There is a way out of it. Yes. For those who are in the informal sector where I'm employed, it's a problem. And some of them are at home and not working. The, the employers of labor in the private sector are beginning to wonder if I had 10 staff, why is it 10 staff? If I have to pay this 10 staff during this lockdown, there is no production, there is no profit, nothing is coming, no, 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 no uh, inflow. So some of them may be on hard salary, you, know, you may not know. Some salary may have been stopped. If one has to speak, some may have disengaged their staff. Those of them were on a part time basis, those of them were, were casual workers. You won't know. This is not documented. Just imagine a husband whose, whose job is at stake. And that's why the oil sector now, with the downturn of uh, our crude oil, crude oil, the global price uh, regime collapsing, that is the word that is collapsing. That even the oil sector, they are already laying staff for quietly. Nobody will tell you that. The, 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 the private sector employees uh, and NPC is partially for the public sector, they will not come out. But those main players, they are doing it already. You won't know. So, that's of job satisfaction, job security is a big challenge. Not many employers would like to work from home using the online platforms as some, some people are doing. Some may not. There are some jobs that involve physical uh, presence. Those in the manufacturing. Manufacturing. Yeah. You need to be there. Like to craft machines. Yeah. It's not a matter of use, using... You can't use your laptop you to do that. You can't do that and uh, configure something that yeah. people use. Those who have uh, a nice trade and so it's a terrible thing in the community. Then the welfare aspect, people are locked down. And then you look at the whole effort from the federal government to state government, everything is just in pittance, with all due respect. Even for those who have come to support, you see the pittance because when you look at the number population wise, the number of families that are below the, the, the threshold as defined by even the government itself, it's monumental. How many homes have been reached? I stay in a small community where I was able to afford my cheap land to be mass. <laughs> so I can I can sense a living a, a sense of below average a livelihood there. Yeah. I've not heard of one great coming to my community. I don't want to mention it. I understand. But but at least I should know that I've been at home. 
with a long dance. I won't say Nobody has come to your compass. Two to my compass. Then we are trying to my compass. Then there is a professor there. The two hours away from me. Yes. The three hours away from me. Yes. We to hear. Now your neighbors have gone to some So the impact is gone. No, it's on the way. Well, if it's so, I hope so too. So, so the yeah. impact is more. Then talking about at home, look at children being at home for over two. Children themselves want to play, they want to go out. But children are gregarious. They don't want to try to be down for so long. So how do you know cook? The prejudice of the mothers and the fathers. Yeah. So you have the home bottled up, mm. the crisis, and the interpersonal relationship. And ultimately, you find that before you know it, I don't know why to be extending those. <laughs> we are not talking about if there's any extension beyond what we have now. So, so it's, a, it's a serious problem. <laughs> in all the yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Then Lagos and Ogun, we saw the security challenges. Yes. The area boys, the, the so called artisans, or area by them, they got fed up. And they just, yesterday I was watching a, I was looking, somebody, somebody sent me online a robbery scene at Lekki. Five young men came to rob, of course, so they were caught, and they just killed about four of them right on the spot. Them on the ground. Some will say it is poverty, some will say it is not poverty, it is just greed. Whatever it is, it's very challenging, especially in Lagos and the states. Thank you, Prof. We are not keeping dirty, whether poverty mm. is their lives and not yeah. so, so we need to look at this in more holistically during okay. the lockdown. Okay, thank you, Prof. We'll come back to you. Um, about to it. Yes. Now, um, the governors, the, 36, uh, the governors of the 36 states, from what we have heard, a proposal, a resolution. Now, do you think lockdown is actually the way out of this COVID-19? Well, uh, I would not want to toe that line. Okay. Uh, because uh, judging from uh, those states where I am and where I have been since uh, this uh, issue started, okay. uh, there is no evidence, no clear evidence to say that uh, it's uh, the lockdown, total lockdown, mm. you know, that will stop uh, the, the spread. spread. You know, looking at the measures uh, that are taken right now in uh, those states, well, if uh, as of today we are talking about uh, 17 cases and uh, seven discharged, uh, though uh, we have recorded two deaths, uh, recorded, uh, two deaths. Two deaths. And, uh, I think that the case is, uh, is being managed yeah. very properly and we have been on a uh, uh, partial partial lockdown. Mm. So if uh, those states have succeeded, you know, like this, so I think every other state, you know, if uh, uh, if they are actually ready, you know, to put in so much, they will also succeed. So talking about a uh, total lockdown, it, the economic effects will be so serious, you know, on the people, even the government itself, uh, when there is no production, uh, how do you think, you know, the government will survive? You know, before now, we have uh, pushed the issue of uh, diversifying from Nigeria mono economy yeah, yeah, about, uh, exactly. mm. and a lot of uh, successive governments you know have done it uh, they, they have played with it they have mm. joked with it and as we speak now we are still running that mono economy and look at the downfall mm. you know oh, now saying ourselves of uh, the oil oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know we hear, we hear now that it's selling for about 14 uh, 14 uh, mm. dollars uh, per barrel. Uh, you know, well, and yeah, knowing, knowing that the benchmark, you know, was about 40 something, yeah, you know, as, uh, to, to have, uh, that we used in preparing our budget. And so, how are we going to run the government? Imagine, you know, to have dropped to about 14, 14 dollars. Well, so, tell me, how is it going to happen? But if before now we have diversified our economy, talking about agriculture, talking about so many other areas, you know, where we can actually generate funds from. But now we have been saying, oh, even if oil is not selling, mm. at least, you know, so the agricultural sector, yeah. you know, will come up, you know, to take its place and, mm. you know, looking at other sectors. But uh, successive uh, governments, you know, have a uh, joke with it, and this is where we find out. But for those who think that this COVID-19 now has exposed the flaws, a lot, a yes. lot, a lot. So ca can't it be a wake-up call? It, it, must be, it will be a wake-up call if only our leaders will be ready to learn, if they, they will be sincere. You know, sincerity is usually the problem of, uh, of Nigeria as a country and okay. Nigerians. Yes. You know, if we are not sincere to ourselves and we are not sincere to our people, then you, you, you begin to see some, uh, you know, some uh, intrigues, you know, in what is happening. Otherwise, uh, with this that has happened, one would have been able to know that Nigeria need to focus more on the health sector, 
Nigeria need to yeah. diversify its economy. Yeah. Nigeria need to come up with so many things, innovations, you know, that will keep the country running. Yeah. But right now, anyway, let's see, maybe after the COVID, the entire uh, issue of COVID-19, yeah. our government will wake up to its responsibility. Okay. Uh, if uh, they will not uh, see it, as because like we are already wearing, you know, fire buttons, uh, different uh, uh, agencies of government, different establishment. If there's an avenue to keep some money in the private pockets, we don't know. But uh, we are hoping that uh, they will learn from this. <laughs> we are hoping that they okay. will learn. Okay. Yeah. We, we were told, mm -hmm. you know, that they have distributed an S amount of form, mm -hmm. uh, and then some uh, certain Nigerians were asking, please, we need to get the report from you. Oh, the document is in the office of the Akata General. Uh, of the federation and then in the next uh, few hours we hear that that office uh, is already on fire so okay. we, we are yet to to get the latest yes, I think the federal government will prove that yes. and give <laughs> us exactly what transpired <laughs> as regards that it, 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 it boils down to sincerity okay it boils down to sincerity if we are actually very sincere to us even some as we speak now if you tell some persons that covid 19 actually exists in, in nigeria they will tell you it does not exist because actually, when you watch the the, uh, the international stories, you see these patients how they are being monitored. You know, you know, in other developed countries of yeah. the world, you see them live and all this. But here, we only see a board where we show uh, as at uh, yesterday we got 91, mm -hmm. bringing the total to 873 uh, dead, 25. This, but we are not seeing, you know, these persons. We are not seeing them. So if it, some person, like a few days ago, some person almost, you know, there was almost a fight, you know, busting out over this issue because some person said COVID-19 does not exist in Nigeria because they have not seen it. But for, for some other countries of the world, they have actually seen it. They have shown them, they have seen it. But for Nigeria, they have not seen it. But it, it, it took us a lot of energy, you know, to educate this person, to convince them that it exists. It's here. It's even here with us on the doorstep. We mentioned some local governments where, you know, this thing is, uh, is even present with us. Mm. You know, but they found it very difficult to believe. Thank you. So in the area of sensitization, we still have a lot more to do. Uh, I think what the chairman of uh, NYCN, uh, Basri, has just said is that he believes, he agrees that there is COVID-19 in Nigeria yes. in Edo State, but that it's, it takes a lot of effort to convince some people who do not believe that COVID-19 exists. But on this program, I want to make it clear now that coronavirus it exists. exists. Yes. And that's what Obasu has said, that yes. it exists. Yes. But the, 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 it takes them a lot of effort to convince some people to believe them that it exists. But then, the issue of lockdown, uh, we are looking at the effect too. The federal government has talked about palliatives. And uh, my guests have talked about palliatives that a lot need to be done so that these palliatives can get to the, the vulnerable persons. Yeah, yes, the issue yes, of vulnerable yes, yes. has always come to the fore. Yes. Who are the vulnerable persons? Yes. If you ask me, okay. I will tell you that the youths are more vulnerable. Oh, because you are the youths. Oh, it's not the case. It's not the case. Yes. Even though we agree that the elderly are there, yeah. you know, and then those in the orphanages are also there. Okay. But if you give a bag of rice to one elderly man, and then you hear that in the next few hours some youths have gone there to bubble it and they've taken the rice from the man, what have you done? Have you achieved anything with that old man? Not at all. Okay. But if you are able to settle the entire, you know, society, you know that these youths, how many youths are working, are actually working? When you know that somebody is not working, that person is vulnerable. Okay. Of course, you should be able to take care of that person. Like I was hearing just now, a few even before I came here, that they heard that I've gotten a trailer load of trailer to share to the uh, of rice, a trailer load of rice to share to the youth of, uh, to of those states. Okay. And I told them I've not gotten a grain. <laughs> Even though government may have been making arrangements, you know, for all that, but I have not received it. And I'm aware that, you know, certain areas like the religious groups and so others have got, even the Muslims, they have not got. I, I hear that there's going to be a second phase. Probably that is where they are also going to bring the oh, one yes. for the youth. I don't know. But we are waiting. Okay. We just hope that... Uh, uh, that uh, so we get so it, the youth are vulnerable. Yeah, very, 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 very vulnerable. Yeah, the vulnerable yeah, yeah, vulnerable. Like, like I said, there, yes. there are some minimum benchmarks okay. for the family who is vulnerable, really. 
like I said, unemployment is one of the yastic, and so we, we use we have a high gauge of unemployment okay. in Nigeria, high level of unemployment. Then the artisans too are going to be affected now. Especially in states where you have total lockdown. Mm. Yeah, one of the, our aged parents and uh, who are not uh, uh, able to earn anything now. Yes. Uh, some of them who are already old and who rely on some of these persons who are who can't work. Mm. They are also vulnerable. And then of course the those in the orphanage homes and all those who have all the while relied on charity yes. and benevolent of them to survive. Even those who beg for whatever reasons that they chose to beg. Mm. And so many other issues can come. Even those who are challenged physically yeah. too. Physically, physically challenged those who also have uh, had uh, misfortune one way or the other. So, our social welfare workers, we have though the, the, the partial lockdown, we have officers who know all these things, they are documented. Uh, we have a program by federal government, which I believe was also replicated by the states. Yeah. So, we can't pretend we don't know all these things. And then, our political leaders, our, our political leaders, like he is in the of his office. Some of us who have the potential of also identify this in within our midst. Yeah, the vulnerable uh, persons. And do that within our midst. Okay. And so we cannot claim we don't know them. Okay. Just that people may pretend not to know them, and others may also want to get crashed into, into the into the food just because it's manna from heaven quotes. Yeah. So a man who is not vulnerable want to hijack what is meant for those who are vulnerable. But I say we are human beings. God is watching us. If you know you are okay and you choose to use this pandemic. As an opportunity to enrich yourself and deny the poor and the vulnerable what belongs to them. It's attacking to capital offense and the mortal sin before God. I don't know how you want to get out of it. Okay. Now, before we call it a day on the show, um, there's a school of thought that believes that probably the federal government, the state government should not actually uh, consider the issue of lockdown. Do they believe that, yes, the uh, federal government um, policy? using lockdown is to curtail the spread. Uh, but the school of thought that believes that if there's, um, if there's an order that all citizens must put on face masks, nose masks, before they leave their homes in public places, it's a must. That people should be allowed to walk. The artisans should be allowed to walk. People should move freely, but they must put on face masks. Yes. And that once you put on face masks, the spread will not, will not uh, there will be no spread. Do you subscribe to this school of thought? I start with the chairman of the National Youth Council. Do you think this uh, school of thought should be considered by government? Well, I think it should be considered. But even talking about face masks, I see a lot of persons using this face mask as if they don't know how to actually use it. Okay. You, may, you see somebody driving all alone, under air conditioner, inside his car, and then wear face mask. Alone! <laughs> inside the car. So are you going to infect yourself with the disease? Hmm. I, I, don't, I don't see any... So maybe... Uh, any, so maybe so sensitization needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. You know, so that people will also understand and know when and how to okay. use so this, uh, this face mask. Yeah. Yes. And not really if you have maintained the social distancing policy as, uh, as it is, you don't need face masks. Okay. But but this issue of, of, of lockdown, do you think Putting on face masks can we can avoid lockdown. Do you think so? If people are made to put on their face masks, allowed to walk. Of course. Teachers go to school. Uh, students go to school, but everybody on face masks. Well, sometimes this uh, face mask can also be very very inconveniencing. Okay. Uh, though we we try to you know adapt you know to yeah. it as yeah. it is now because uh, when you find yourself in some situation. So you know, you will need to adjust. Uh, it's, it's, it's can, it can be very, very inconvenient. But however, if that is what we need to do, you know, to stop the spread, you know, to ensure that, uh, uh, to see if we can still go out to work mm. so that the economy of the nation and then our state cannot just go down the drain, I think all of us, we, 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 we can, Thank we you. can well, adjust. Thank you. What's your take on that? I think, I think that... Like because this program can also set an agenda. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. yes, definitely. Okay. Like, uh, Figures we are getting from the NCDC does not suggest uh, or confirm that the lockdown has been effective. Okay. But if you have locked down people who are in Lagos and the FC for this long, yes, Lagos will be. Never see all these funny figures. I call it funny figures coming. And in those states where we have had partial, partial lockdown. lockdown, we have our figures. I won't say it's okay, but not too moderate. Moderate. It tells you that the lockdown thing is a panic measure. 
to reactionary measure and they are just trying to copy what is happening in the dark line where they have their own vulnerabilities their weather and everything makes it spread monumental in euro flu is a common problem it's about flu almost every winter and yes so they look forward to the summer so this flu this almighty flu if i use that word just fit into their own uh, setting but for us to be being locked down we don't have the economic where we have to talk about the wealth of our our season we don't have the final reserve to fall back on our state we just recover from the recession we are a poor nature a better nature so we cannot shut down indefinitely can't shut down our different sector, our uh, economic sectors, and every sector. We cannot shut down both public and private. So, in states where they have been locked down for about three weeks now, or a month, and for us just experiencing partial lockdown for about three weeks now, we cannot think about further lockdown. Mm -hmm. So, what are the measures? Spend more money on applying testing kits. Because billions of naira have been stacked somewhere. We don't know what they're doing with it. Those non nations, don't know they have been stacking money. Acquire more testing kits. Carry out more testing. Use the rapid response test. Use it. Buy more uh, thermometers or whatever I call them to test in public places. Provide masks. You can subsidize as well. So to get people to get masks. And the establishment should streamline. If you have a have 1,000 workers, you can do a shift system. So you can maintain the 20 at a time in a room. And in any case, most private sectors they don't even have that crowd. Except those in the production sector. And then you wear hand gloves. Let's for health measures, safety measures that can make us gradually ingrain ourselves mm. back to, to work, what we used to be. Okay. And in the countries where we where the thing is epicenter, they are gradually on food, they're gradually losing down the lockdown. They are coming out of it gradually. But suddenly it is now we are now in a panic mode. I'm saying we want to lock down okay. and state shut down and all that thing. Thank you Prof. You've made a point and, and I want to thank uh Osama Obasu. thank you very thank much. You so much. And our viewers, I hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of the program 60 Minutes Nigeria. It is an abridged version to allow an educational program because most of the children are home. They need to watch this educational yeah, program very, very, very so that they can be updated, their knowledge can be updated. Well, on that note, I say thank you for being a part of this week's edition. My name is Ego Sabula. Bye bye. This 